Hello, everyone. Welcome to John and Dylan Online, a show where two comedians do half-assed research into inter- internet things. I am Dylan Gott, and introducing the subject of the show is the vivacious John Hastings. I'll tell you why I was constipated for four months, and that's because at this fucking program, we don't fuck around when it comes oh, to research. Yeah. The old show, Wrestler Review, we didn't even fucking like wrestling. We're boxing guys, but uh, not today. <laughs> we love the box. I love to box. Oh, that Tyson Fury. Ooh, that Jake Paul. He's so respectful of sport. Um, But not today. Today we're talking about the boxing of food. That's right. It's epic meal time. It's that guy who did it the whole time. It's the other people he claimed were actors. It's the joke that bacon is good for so much longer than you remember that being popular. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's the thing that was so 2010, it somehow lasted until 2020. (laughs) Bacon muscles suck my penis. It's epic <laughs> meal time. <laughs> it's so interesting uh, thinking of epic meal time where if you are not uh, 40, you don't remember it being cool. And it was we, very much like this is an interesting case study, too, because Harley Mortensen it, oh, hope I'm saying that say right, is our exact age. Before Harley Mortensen is I, w- I, kn- I don't know this specific guy. I know so many of these specific people because he is he came out of. A very specific time, which is Montreal in the 2000s, which was essentially never, never land. You could get a, you know, I had an apartment. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. You my rent was $275 a month all in. Mm. And we struggled to cover it. And we stru- you and Montreal is beautiful. Like you're living in basically no frills Paris, France, which is still amazing. Yeah. For 200 bucks. And as John said one time, Montreal's crazy because. Rent is so cheap. You join a bit jazz band. You blink and you're 46, and you're like, "Oh fuck! I guess I, I guess we're not gonna make it, are we?" <laughs> yeah, like that's the thing. Like I got, I know guys in bluegrass bands that are saying things to me like, "In five more years, we're thinking about throwing in the towel." The towel. First of all, you're in bluegrass. You should have wheat. Uh, second of all, so mm. it was just this weird time where everyone. So Quebec, if you're not from Canada, Quebec is French Canada. Uh, Quebec uh, has some English people, but it's very cheap because in the 70s and the 90s, they almost separated from the country. So the economy in the province is really, really fucked. So property was so much cheaper than the rest of the country. Artists constantly moved there. And then in the 2000s, it was like a very trendy, cool time. This is like an arcade fire came out of this scene. A bunch of sort of like Jean Lejoie. If you rig it there every day, no more guy. That guy was from like, it's just this time where you could kind of be creative. It was also the very beginning of the internet. So people grabbed cameras. Epic mealtime is the most of this time thing based off of like Harley Mortensen was this like weird. He was like a bearded loser. Morenstein. But I don't care. Loser. A, here's what I was going to say is that, first of all, saying this a man's a loser is big because this guy is this guy not knows people we know. So you can. Oh, yeah. Not a loser. That shit. This guy's actually probably all right. Like, let me say this guy. <laughs> I guarantee this guy definitely has a favorite Royal Rumble and he could slot into this program. No problem. And you guys he would got knocked would. out by Johnny, Johnny Elite, Johnny Mercury, Johnny Nitro. Where did knocked he out. get knocked out by Johnny Elite? Creator Clash too. You got fucking. Hey. He lost 70 pounds, and it turns out, as I've said hundreds of times, um, some people just aren't as athletic as other people. Turns out Johnny Nitro, a guy who at like 48 can still do like an inverted spin, uh, more athletic than a guy who made bacon a word that I hated. I st- I hated it before. So it's 2010, and here's how you know, by the way, Harley Mortenstein. Morenstein. It's, uh, how are you pronouncing it? I pronounce it Morenstein. I don't know. Oh, how I'm not pronouncing fucking it that way. Libs pronounce it. Whoa. Are we talking about the Libbies? Um, I told you about how I found out Norman Mailer called people Libbies. And I think it's so much better than Libs because it's it's so much it's so much more dismissive. Look at you, Libby. Dylan. You Libby. <laughs> oh, it's he's got all your Libbies here. Um, <laughs> so that's not funny. It is funny. You're a Libby. See? It is fun to say to people like you're no, going to say it's that. not. Yeah, you are. I, this is my New Year's resolution is when someone tells me a funny little story, take offense to it. Oh, that's a good one. I was recently petting a dog and it farted. Go ahead. Take a shot. The that. fuck up. <laughs> you did what to a dog? <laughs> that's disgusting. Maybe that doesn't. Maybe that doesn't. <laughs> maybe that, well, that's my favorite thing. My brother-in-law will do is someone will tell like a little cute story and then he'll go. <laughs> 
shut the fuck up <laughs> so loudly in public. And it's a hundred percent laugh on this one. To have the confidence <laughs> of a Greek man. I want to say this right now. Shut the fuck up. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you have, that's what all Donald Trump is. is a it's white all, That's man. all he is. Is He's just he is just a Greek son. As of this now, like he might be in jail. But the fact that he like took a bunch of nuclear documents and just put them in his shower is the Greekest yeah. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. The put them in the shower, bro. Put them in the bottom. I fucking though. bottom. Yeah. Speaking we'll of very map. race, Montreal. Also, I bet my I bet my dick and my pussy on this one. Harley Mordenstein, Epic Meal Time. These guys are the most suburb. This is the most suburban yes. idea because these guys are just rolling around in their mid 20s in a fucking grocery store in Canada, highly stocked. There's so much food and just being cunts to everybody. But okay. Harley, this is Completely. very key here, is such a big man. No one will say shit to him. Like, I'm sure this, he would get knocked out by, like, a person at a bar, but no one in a grocery store in the middle of the day is going to be like, could you shut the fuck up about how you're buying so much bacon and stop talking that way to my grandmother? It's also the thing is that this is going to sound crazy. It's also Montreal. So Montreal is also, you have to remember, if he's in the English, he's in an English suburb of Montreal, there's, like, nobody fucking there. Like, they have to put the stuff there because they're there. But it's like a it's essentially a small town within a weird isolated city. And also he's in the middle of the day. He's a big guy. That's totally true. And so capturing on the zeitgeist of so many people I knew in their mid 20s literally mm. just drove around all day and had shitty kind of whatever jobs he was. I knew this such a fucking I live in Montreal and I'm a half baked just figuring it out. 20 year old half loser in that he was a part time um substitute teacher because in quebec because they had so few teachers all you needed was a university degree and you could that's be awesome. in the school system i that's very awesome was a substitute teacher i had a theater that's degree awesome. i was a substitute teacher in the sciences and i walked in i'll forget i went if you guys are all very quiet you can just do all the homework that you have from your other classes and we won't talk about it and then they went, what? No, you were a substitute teacher. You never oh, told me this. We'd known each other like almost. I've never told you I was a substitute me. teacher in Montreal. I oh. was. Oh my God. It's I was insane. I was for two years. It was, I knew so little. I call, I remember I like filled out my invoice and I was just used to working in, uh, in like restaurants where you get like an envelope, like a little tip that I thought that they'd like pay you at the end of the day. <laughs> and they were like, no, we, <laughs> we send you a check in the mail. I was like, I don't think that's happening. Well, I guess I just got screwed out of some bucks. Uh, but yeah, no, I was a substitute teacher. It was insane. I was also working as a radio producer and a comedian. So I also did substitute teaching classes on no sleep. And I I literally just went no talking, just do the homework from your other classes. And we just sat there silently. And then at lunchtime, I'd go sit in the staff room. And at this particular time, I remember a very thin teacher was just like, you want to know what I want to say to these little fucks? I just want to say, fuck you, fuck, fuck you, fuck, <laughs> fuck you. For 30 minutes, she said that. And all the other teachers sat there silently. And uh, and then we went back and then I taught the afternoon. And then I saw her at at the school bell. So I like just left five minutes at the school bell. And I saw her. She was already at her car getting in. I was like, whoa, this, this lady fucking hates her job. What grade was it? was teaching high school a john rennie high school i believe was the high school yeah that makes sense that i assume high school teachers have a crying room just because you oh. can't be like shut the fuck up to these kids i mean the the, st the staff room was fully stocked there there was a bar in there there was a barman he was wearing no a way. white shirt yeah. with a, yeah <laughs> a Quebec, Hello, Quebec, yeah canadian public schools cannot afford books but they can't afford uh every school uh every teacher's lounge to have a bartender uh, was, hello, Rick. I remember we went to uh, -huh. uh we went on a class trip to Quebec. I forget where city, but there was you could smoke in a McDonald's, which blew our fucking minds. That was 2003. That's exactly 20 years ago. We were like, what the fuck? And then oh we were like, <laughs> everyone in our class just basically were like, we gotta get cigarettes because there's no way we're missing an opportunity to smoke in this McDonald's. And we all smoked, <laughs> <laughs> like looking at the I teachers. Mean... All the teachers were like, what the fuck are you doing? And we're like. You can't you can't pass up an opportunity to smoke near a play place where it's yeah, fine. What are you doing? I'll have you know. And by the way, I look back on this as there was a grocery store in my neighborhood when I first moved to Montreal in two thousand and strap in for this four. Ooh, and oh, 
and it had um, uh, it had ashtrays on the top and bottom of all the aisles of the grocery store. I remember that. And by the way, looking back, I was like, it was only that one grocery store. Meaning that guy was like, this place. You want to? You know? You know how we're gonna keep them coming to our mom and pa? It's a grocery store, and it's a place to smoke inside. <laughs> and it, <laughs> I gotta tell you, I I smoked in there, and it was fun. Oh yeah, buddy. Gre- Greco Pizza and Wings in Stouffville, Ontario, Canada. I smoked in there. Fucking oh. sick. Of- they sold every type of food. Jamaican was... beef patties and a gyro. Why not? Oh, fuck yeah. There is the gyro just... meat in the beef patty, and then I fucking smoked a cigarette, and then I waited for death to wash over me. Oh, my we God. We got to talk about Epic Meal Time. Harley. So Harley Morenstein is the guy who stuck with it the most. He was the dude who uh, was the star of the show from the jump. It's clearly like his idea, and everyone else just kind of lopped on, which is fine. But then, like anything, it's like... This is such an interesting story because it's like you yeah, and so, your friends, if you would have never went into comedy or I would have never went into comedy and then you just like have an idea and then you really spearhead it and kind of like make everyone else do it. And well, that's what it really comes across as. And then it works out. And then they're like, well, actually, I came up with this part. That's what it comes off as. I don't know. Um you're totally everyone right. the... says everything. It's like when the oral history of something is just everyone arguing, you have to just kind of. Yeah, I think that know. it was probably a collaboration. It was kind of all of them. They also, none of them realized the brilliant idea that they had. So for those who don't know, Epic Mealtime is they would make a ridiculous food out of other already prepared foods. So they would make like a fast food lasagna, fast food pizza, something like that. The cruise use pancakes ever. The reason why this was really interesting is A, it was like long form content that you guaranteed people would watch because they wanted to see all the steps. They wanted to see what the food, where the, them buying the food, them preparing the food, them eating the food because of how crazy it was. And it was also so on the guy, zeitgeist because they employed this weird thing at the time. Jack Daniels very popular, I think, because of Motley Crue's uh, book, The Dirt. Um, and it was kind of like. Sounds really strange, but it was very much that was the whiskey that was talked about the, the, culturally now where everyone's like, oh, it's a Glenn Klugen. Like that was one guy <laughs> and he had patches on his blazer and you definitely pissed on him once he passed out at the house party because he was 19. And you're like, get the fuck wearing an ascot fucking Francis. Fuck you, Julian. Fuck you. Um, And stuff like that. But Jack Daniels was the accepted whiskey. And this basically was just like, yo, are you 20? We talk the same as you. And yeah. then we're going to make a cool thing. And also Harley affected. He basically did a impression of Will Ferrell, the Vince Vaughn, which was so how oh, comedy yeah. was presented at that point. You have to remember everyone in 2010, we are just coming out of a, a 10 year period where conversation between straight males was just saying things. Will Ferrell said in a movie at each other. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Is it still? Yeah, I'm sure it's still like that with like whatever. No, it's not. Now they just silently send us. They send the literal TikTok video to their friend. Like they don't do the impression. They just go, you see it? Well, that makes sense because they're like us if a a woman's bikini fell off at the beach and we were 14. Did you see him? Well, I just mean like you don't have to like you used to have to do shitty impressions because I couldn't just be like, hey, I have I, I don't walk around with a fucking DVD of old school. Like you actually have, wait, you can wait. in the moment like watch the thing instead of doing a shitty impression. First of all, the idea that you didn't walk around with a DVD of old school really changes our friendship. So Second of all, DVD of wedding crashers. Thank that makes way more sense. Let me say this about wedding crashers. Holds up. I watched it. Uh, I watched it when I remember when I broke my shoulder in the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 I watched a bunch of uh, frat pack movies. Wed- oh, wedding, yeah. sing- uh, wedding crashers ha- like holds up. So much better than like some of the other ones. Boo. Old school is just bad. It doesn't. I'm just. I'm on Frank the Tank's wife side. Yeah, get in the fucking van, Frank. You got kids. What are you doing? Just oh, hundred. Drunk. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's, anyway, shitty suburban white guys is who these Epic Meal Time guys are. Uh, they are us. They are us. They are us. They that, are, but they're, they're just not funny like, by themselves. If, they needed to this, get to be a group to be funny. No, this this is to- totally 
something I would have done if I would have just stayed in Stouffville, but just like a worse version of this. Oh yeah. It's like, it's just this, but it's just like with, uh, uh, buying different pharmaceuticals to try and get high. You know, if you take 800, <laughs> you take 80 aspirin, you get pretty buzzed. <laughs> oh dude, it would have been me doing a shitty Jack Black impression. And I, am envisioning- oh, most ah. of my friends wanting to be muscles glasses <laughs> like, oh <my>. all <laughs> of my all of my friends from high school wanted to be muscles glasses while i do a shitty jack black but yes the, so the the video is it's exactly what you're saying it's kind of like it's a it's a frat boy cooking show the other secret thing that the reason why over time it gets less and less views and shit is because these guys are fucking hammered doing the first ones. Yeah, that's the other like thing. If it's you watch the this, first Epic Meal Time, they so are fun. fucking annihilated. It's so fun. That's the thing is this, Harley this thing is starts like at fucked. Yeah. It, that's why it's fun. The first batch of these, they, it, it, here's the thing that uh, with Harley, I think he gets a I think he gets a bum steer because here's Harley's problem is he was the one who organized the assholes. And you're looking at two other men who have organized assholes. And it's the least fun because you always end up in Harley's position, which is, well, I did all the work, so I actually do get all the money. That's how that works. And then these guys are like, yeah. no, you don't understand. I drank eight fucking vodka shots and then just took off my shirt while you ate a bunch of bacon wrapped in lettuce leaves. That was as important to the video. And it's like, listen, it was it was funny you did that, but you didn't you didn't buy that shirt. I bought you that shirt. I found you naked. You were naked in your house and I bought you clothes. <laughs> and it's yeah, like it's, it's it's like any story of a band where it's like we had one big hit, no one knew how to handle the success because I mean they're I disagree. I don't YouTube. think it, I, they're not even the wearing thing, like lav mics. There's no like they're they're getting this sounds like such a it, weird thing, but it's like they're they're filming it correctly, but like they don't have any like the sounds all coming from like the camera they're using. So like they're yeah. they're they're just doing this shit for fun. There's a lot of great shit to it because it's like they have the calorie counter that's really dope. Um, they have uh, also like the story of it is just like these guys are getting hammered and they're making the ultimate meat, like the ultimate meal to eat while you're fucking hammered. Even the name epic meal time. It's when people used to just say epic as like a fucking thing. It could have been like two years oh earlier God, called even... random meal time. Yeah, it would be like if like if everyone called it like Yas Queen Meal Time now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely not. It would not have been Yas Queen Meal Time. Can we please uh, launch a web series called Yas Queen Meal Time? <laughs> yes, me and you do it just so yes. it's as uncomfortable as possible. Uh, yeah. What is the premise of Yas Queen Meal Time? We just bought the sign. I don't feel comfortable developing the idea. Uh oh, to be homophobic. <laughs> Oh, we want to uh, be homophobic uh, and we want to be ignorant of other cultures in one. And we figured this is the best way to do it. Now, join us while we make the world's biggest gumbo. Here's what it is. Piss and I shit in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but also, if you tell is. us it's not gumbo, we're going to scream freedom of speech and somehow end up with a bigger <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we're just begging We've been you to be upset a bigger with house. so we can then have a podcast. About exactly. That, this is the craziest thing about the world now is people literally are like, you know, if you end up getting on to a major network sitcom and you do that for three years, the network might let you have a podcast. <laughs> oh, yes. That's very funny. Yeah. How like. But I mean, it's just your weird corner of the internet where you where you are. Like, the you know the noises that come out of my my niece watching TikTok with no headphones on. The noises I hear are like these are in this is insanity. But I know these people are like way more successful than the weird noises I hear on TikTok. You know, I don't know. Some of the weird noises I hear on TikTok are pretty successful people because they are. I, I don't, G- Catholic priests. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm only okay. on i only use i uh i'm on catholic tiktok it's just oh, it's just it's just the different snippets of their sermons and then a guy going no he didn't <laughs> so epic meal time did in 20 by 2012 it's kind of like um they are launching a premium youtube series Really, oh, okay. This like was also the weird guys in the 2000s. Sorry to interrupt, but like yep. a, lot, a lot of these guys in the 2000s, the problem that these guys had was they were making money off just off of YouTube ads. Whereas if this, if you fast forward this 10 years later and this idea hits a big in 2020, they have a podcast. Oh they my have God. This, they have that, you know, 
it would have a podcast. There'd be branded bacon. They would have their own. It would be epic be meal some, whiskey. One hundred percent. They would have their own whiskey and bacon. 100%. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna say this right now. I'm gonna say this right now. Same. I hate all the comedian merch products at this point. What? I hate them. I fuck it. I'm fine with a t-shirt. I'm fine with a t-shirt. Why? You go to these shows now, and people are literally breaking out. I've uh, brewed my own vodka. I've got my own line of luggage. No, like, that's what I sell weed. <laughs> are you I selling I weed? Sell my weed. Yeah, I, sell I mean, my, I still, I, I start, I stole weed. There's a lot I've of stole, stems. I've stolen your thing, which is just saying, uh, if you like my set, give me some extra money. I'll be stood over there. And I'll tell you this. Yeah, and then you hand, you hand out and you go ding, 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 ding. It fucking works. It's so ding, funny. Ding, 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 ding. There's always, it's always, um, um, from what I can tell, it's always a dad trying to impress his wife after 10 years of not going out. I'm going to give the comedian a couple of bucks, little lady, and maybe you're going to let go with those of that pussy. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, fuck yeah. Are you talking about fucking? Pussy. With your big pussy. So what's interesting about Epic Mealtime is basically you have this crew and it's Harley. It's this guy's muscles, glasses, and then it's sort of a bunch of unnamed dudes behind him. You have to understand that people of our generation grew up with jackass. And so how we were told friends were in their 20s is you had a crew of guys that you you would say into a camera, this is my best friend. And then you would literally attack them with uh, boards and knives and try and hurt them. Uh, and then eventually they would get a drinking problem and you'd host a lot of podcasts to discuss it. So that's basically what friendship was presented as. And then they Epic Mealtime also did that. So you had Muscles Glasses, uh, who Harley has claimed was an actor to portray Muscles Glasses and Muscles Glasses claims, fuck you. I developed this character. I was a part of this as much as anyone else, uh, as was another guy named Sean Perrault who was sort of another part of this crew. And they all claimed that they had a lot more to do with the creation and innovation of Epic Mealtime. And Harley was just like, no. And also, by the way, this is my one thing where I'm like, mm, I smell a businessman. Cause as soon as you hear Harley and his brother, as soon as there's an older brother involved that like isn't <laughs> on screen, watch the fuck out. There's always just something I'm sure. I bet you Harley's a really nice guy. I bet you that older brother bit dismissive on email. You know what I'm saying? Like just a bit oh, like, yeah. all right. Yeah, well, maybe put like a period fucking, in you fucking asshole. It's like Neil Bauman. Eric, his kid comes up with That's something exactly and then he what, fucking shows exactly up and what he's I like, fuck. I know how to get the money out of this. Yeah. Uh, Harley, uh, what are you in your fucking... This is what I picture. I picture the brother from Napoleon Dynamite coming down from his room. Harley's covered in bacon and whiskey. He's tired. They've just built like the world's biggest lava ma uh, waffle made out of cheese and cum. And uh, his brother comes down eating like 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 he has like some nuts in his hand like an asshole. Like, Harley, yeah, uh, I was I was upstairs talking to fucking babes on fucking MSN Messenger. What you do all day? And then Harley's <laughs> like, I made um, I sh I shoved a bunch of bacon inside a baby, and then we microwaved the baby, and then we ate the baby, and it's gotten <laughs> ten million views on YouTube. And then his brother was like. You're probably not uh, using the correct vertical and synergizing, so you better get your friends to sign contracts, and we better ruin those friendships, and you can go into vlogging in about 10 years. Hey, you, what you should do is, uh, what if you had a good idea, though? Why don't you diversify? Because this business idea doesn't have very much. Um, you need to brand out and uh, launch another brand, and Epic Meal Time can be only one part of your synergistic. Yeah, okay. I just made mac and cheese, and it's mostly bacon, and that it's a lot. And then also, my friends are asking me for money now. Uh, yeah, we could do that, brother, but we just fucking broke into a zoo and murdered the rare white elephant and shoved that <laughs> full of President's <laughs> Choice frozen lasagnas. And then we threw a bunch of toasters into a small lake in the center. Of McGill's campus, we threw the uh, the rhino carcass in there, boiled rhino lasagna. <laughs> we of the cast members are dead because it turns out you cannot eat the skin of a rhino; it is covered in bacteria. <laughs> this is the South Spouse, and we're going to the Humane Society and see if they'll <laughs> sell us dogs we can cook. Oh, Jack Daniel, South on this dead dog. Yeah. Welcome to Epic Meal Time. We are in the weird dumpster where they put babies that were born still, and we're gonna fucking make a baby <laughs> skull gumbo.
Joseph Coney just let us eat one of his kids. <laughs> the South Bowls is back in the South Bowls. We are currently in North Korea where we're going to eat a lot of food in front of some starving people. We call that epic. That's the other thing is like, show, like in, when we're in a fucking climate apocalypse in 20 years, you watch Epic Meal Time and it's just these oh my fucking God. assholes who aren't even rich just like putting bacon around a toilet and then just throwing the toilet. The what, I, like, what I really hope is, is that Osama bin Laden, who was still alive when Epic Meal Time started, I bet you he's in his compound in Pakistan and he's like, I finally got those American bastards. That's how they talk. That's how he They're talks. That's how he talks. Their decadence I'm has I'm been gonna... destroyed. <laughs> and then he turns on YouTube inexplicably. He's watching YouTube. No, even more decadent than before. Like, imagine how pissed off Osama bin Laden would be to see Epic Mealtime. They're eating bacon and drinking booze, driving I'm... cars near yeah. where women are driving cars. Well, that's what the thing is. It's the most wasteful possible thing. You can do, and also, yeah, like obviously the South, but it would just be, it would open. No, no, lower. The most, the most, e- the biggest epic meal time video lower. would be it opens and he's like, uh, this is the South, boss. I'm here with my role models, Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> and of course, Hitler. This is the South, boss. We're coming at you live from my friend Jeff's private island. Oh, We're going to yeah. hunt some women and then cook them. Muscles glasses has been killed for asking questions about where the money comes from. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one thing that this was. You talk about this like it is the jackass cooking show. And it the one thing they are missing is his mom just being like, what the fuck are you doing with your time? That is the okay. one thing where it's like if his mom just came in and was like, Harley, you're 25. You should get a union job. You can totally do it while you're doing this if this doesn't work out. And then his mom, he's like, what a fucking bitch. Can I just say something, too? There is something about Canadian parents that if their kids do not get to, like, they don't get to life by 25. There's something in Canada where it's like, God damn it, go work for the school board. There's something where it's just like in their head, like, like just like there's like, we got to get them into a union. Yeah, look, there's Dylan right there. In that fucking but- union. But it's the funniest fucking thing. I remember, like, I remember a uh, one of the one of the teachers at my high school's son is Justin Bieber's guitar player, and I remember in the last year of high school, clearly his son was like struggling to be a professional artist, and this guy who was the drama teacher was like, "Just watch out going into the arts." My son is. He's a session musician for this woman, Fifi Dobson. He's just not making that much money. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. it worked out all right, pal. Like, it's just something the parents where they're like, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to make, but you're so right. Epic Mealtime would have lasted a hundred more years if they had introduced a parent character. Harley's mom. That's not dietary nutritious. Try some quinoa. Well, that's the other thing about Canada. The reason why we have socialized medicine and we can share so much is because A, there's a lot of land and B, we don't have any fucking hippies. So fucking get off your ass and get a job, Harley. That's true. Unless we you want to not- move to Los Angeles, loser assholeville. But if you're here in my country, which is Quebec, I guess, too, get a fucking job, mop up, mop up some floors, teach some kids how to cut more your like your job is to teach kids things, but mostly you're a cautionary tale. That's what right. teachers for me was were like, oh, I don't yeah, want to yeah. be that guy. What's this building? Well, it's where you're supposed to learn how to read, but really it's you're going to uh, the ghost of Christmas future for 12 <laughs> years. <laughs> this guy's going to talk a lot about history and then he's going to talk about how that relates to his divorce. Let me say this right now. There was a teacher in my elementary school. His name was Mr. Broussard. I remember one time he wore sunglasses inside every day. I remember one time his sunglasses fell off in the hallway. No one would have noticed, but he screamed, if anyone mentions how red my eyes are, you're going to the office. And I look back now and I go, Mr. Broussard had a drug problem. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, so let's talk a little bit. All of the videos, the most recent video that's like at the top of the most popular on Epic Meal Times YouTube page is 10 years old. Now, like John said, this is we've been we've been cunts for a minute here on this, but like this is a great idea. It's one of those ideas where as soon as I saw, I remember as soon as I saw this idea, I was like, how come I never did that in high school? Like, how come I never like? I can't believe I never had the foresight to be like, I'm gonna get like it's only gonna be five dollars more if I get my favorite item from A and W, 
and then go across the food court and get like Taco Bell fries and then go to like where they have it like and you get a can of Dr. Pepper instead of a yeah. one. Like that. Like you're looking I can't at I believe I never did that. I got news for you. I know how to eat KFC. These fucks don't know how to eat KFC. It's a layered process. You want to get your you want to get a full bucket of chicken? Not some fucking two piece meal like a fucking yeah. what are we doing? Are we having an amuse bouche? You want to get the extra gravy tub. You get that in a bowl on top of the gravy. You're going to put ketchup. The gravy will hold the consistency of the ketchup on top. Then you want to salt the ketchup. Then you dip the fried chicken in that. That's a ketchup gravy salt mixture. You eat that, that you can actually feel your heart giving up, but you don't care. <laughs> yeah. The first, so the first video they made was the fast food pizza. You basic stuff. You get a pizza, you put all your favorite fast food shit on it. You bake it, you eat it. And like you can see how it's version 1.0. It's filmed, shitty, all this stuff. Their most viewed video is fast food lasagna, which yeah. is which is like awesome because the fast it's food awesome. lasagna really works well because you can layer everything. So it does just straight up look like a lasagna. And can I also say and you're like, oh, I'm gonna die very soon. What is really important about that episode is also it it is them at the high dirge of having sort of all of their characters, all of their awareness. Those fucking and bacon and bacon and bacon and bacon and bacon shirts yeah, were yeah. very briefly everywhere. That was a real I live in Toronto and it's 2011 kind of thing. Um, yeah, obviously, I didn't live. I only lived in Toronto by this point. But like the, it was the not, ubiquity of everyone being like, I just love bacon and how much. Oh, my bacon. God. Can we talk I about that for two seconds? My hand through a wall. I fucking bacon is fine. I've said it before and I will say it again. Bacon is no sausage and we need to all understand that bacon is good. It does not compare oh, to wow. sausage and you can all fuck off. What, what are you doing? What are you fucking doing? Thinking you know that what you bacon can... is, can I tell you, can I really I would like to know on this bacon is they just figured out how to make meat a topping ham will be just as popular. Uh, as... There you go. Do you want to know why Dylan God is a father with a mm. big penis? Do you want to know why? Not big. It's big. Well, it's like it's it's it, well, it's not pleasant, but it suits you. You know what I mean? Like not everyone, <laughs> could, yeah, not everyone can pull off bangs, but Dylan's penis. Yeah, Ooh, some people can wear him. jeans and a suit jacket. That's so true. Let me tell you who cannot. These two losers right here does not look good. Does not look good. It looks like no. that we are looks like we are hungover and we're just trying to style it out to get through this wedding. Yeah, yeah, it definitely looks like we have dirty pants and we forgot there was a wedding. <laughs> oh, no. I was eating soup oh, in the car. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have ate all that soup while uh, I was yep. Oh, fuck. Yep, the white, yeah, you know what? Girlfriend slash wife, depending on which one of it it was, clam chowder in the car was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch trying to tell me I can't eat while driving. She was right. Yep, well, now we know she was right. Aren't you happier that you know? We could have just lived in mystery. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, we're gonna take a break now. I have some fun stuff uh, coming up after the break because Epic Meal Time really does crest in 2012. But the advantage that Epic Meal Time has, John, oh, is that they are Canadian. And what is <laughs> Canadian entertainment if not? Two to four years late on everything, baby. So oh, we got baby. the Epic Meal Time TV show to talk about. I want to talk more about the Epic Meal Time uh, chef. And then I want to come up with some ideas for how they could have pivoted because it was a it was like a one hit wonder, but the YouTube version of it where it's like everyone's fucking loving it. And then they're like, OK, other talk shows and other cooking shows are. I cannot stuff. believe we actually are in sync because I wanted to talk about how they could have pivoted and saved this. And I don't think I actually don't think they could have. And we will get into that debate and become masters of that debate after the break. So then I told him, fuck you. Oh, we're back. Oh, <laughs> oh, tease. Just started a running like a podcast in 2009. Yeah, that's right, man. We're let's do a, let's do a podcast from 2009. Let's, let's exclusively mm -hmm. talk about the minutia of a city's standup scene. Uh, we do that, but not, <laughs> well, you know, we, no, already we do that, <laughs> but hang on, but a different city. And also, let's really make Ooh. it 2010. I was just having a kale smoothie near Ooh. a taco food truck, which is new. A lady had bangs and was wearing a flannel, which we felt was new at the time. <laughs> All right. Enough hog shit. Let's talk about fucking 
Epoch Mealtime and some of their ideas, one of which I thought was good, one of which I thought was bad. Here's the What good was one. the good idea? Was it drinking? What was the bad idea? Not drinking? Honestly, the the series does get worse at when they're like, okay, we're adults now. We can't get oh my God. hammered for all these. It noticeably gets worse. Like, I will say this is that it is nostalgia is a powerful thing. And millennials, we are fueled by remember how good this was in that. I don't think I think that Epic Mealtime peaked in 2012 and then immediately just became a nostalgia nostalgia act. And millennials that like married the third person that they finger sexed at a bar and then moved <laughs> to the suburbs at like 28 were like, remember how fucking cool Epic Meal Time was when we watched that 18 months ago? And then they yeah. would just watch it. Like he's wow, does it it drops off and like the energy? There's so many episodes that are hardly just like, hey, um, today we're gonna have a curry that's supposed to fuck you up the ass. And I think that that is something that's okay. Well, a lot of it is just like, I used to, how did I used to do this? It's like a lot of like trying to recapture it when in reality, it's like the whole fun of it was these are people hanging out who are friends and then yeah. gradually it becomes a business. And there's so many YouTube documentaries that outline this exact thing. It gradually becomes the- a business. It becomes less fun. The whole, the whole vibe they had was this is fun and they kind of lose that. But let's talk about Epic Chef, which is their YouTube premium series which I thought was great because they give basically it's exact. It's like um, iron chef, but with Epic meal time, you have to make a fucking huge ass I, burger with like all of these ingredients in it. So that's I will it. say that the problem with this show was that it was on YouTube premium. So for those of you that don't know, YouTube has attempted to monetize its platform many no, times. This is, not, this is not YouTube premium. This is a premium YouTube series. So it's like you, you donate a bit extra and you get access to this series. Okay. Either way, the premium they, was like here we we are Google. We have a bunch of movies. Yeah. They okay. Money and whatever. So either way, this should have just been on TV. This was still a time where what Epic Meal Time needed to do was jump off of the YouTube platform. If this had been on TV and like like, how do I say this? I'm pretty sure they didn't turn down money. Like I'm sure that they just didn't get that offer. And in classic fashion, 2012 is when they peak. Two years later, they get an adaptation of it called Epic Meal Empire on the FYI network, which oh, was boy. a Canadian network I, funded oh, by bo- some weird loopholes. Don't some ideas for uh, reality shows for Epic Meal Time. The content- All right. So it's like Epic Meal Time. You make the thing like Epic Chef. You make the best Epic Meal Times type meal. Mm. You know, you have to include pizza, maybe an mm. egg McMuffin. And then you have like, you can have branded stuff. But the here's the twist. The contestants have to actually murder the animals with no weapons. And then yeah, you have it to was cook weird. It. But hey, there's, we're no, like, the... there's no voiceover. It's just a yeah, steady yeah, yeah. cam shot. Fists on a pig. You have to kill that pig. If the pig wins, then if the pig kills you. The pig's making the, the dish thing. with you. You're the main protein for the pig's dish. I don't understand exactly. what the fucking that, problem is, is. Yeah, exactly. That's a lot of it, too, is that like the pig... The pig sometimes, if you don't kill the pig, then we they kill you. I mean, they did a celebrity edition of the show, which and it, Paula Dean versus a Komodo dragon. And I got to tell you, it feels really weird to watch Paula Dean call the Komodo dragon an N-word and then beat it to death with a rolling pin. <laughs> but she does do that. And it is much longer than I was really prepared to watch. Watch the whole thing. She seems so in her element it, it's like it would be like watching it's like watching me and dylan chat we've been doing it for so long it comes neat yeah that's the other thing is epic meal time would always bleep the swears so paula yeah. dean could use all the slurs she wants oh boy they get bleeped i gotta tell you i did not know that she knew so many british slurs for black people but she did <laughs> yeah. she's just because she's racist doesn't mean she's not learned she's learned for those of all you the ways to hurt their feelings this is crazy. You don't remember Paula Dean. Paula Dean was a woman who was on the food network in the daytime. You'd turn it on and it was brightly well lit in her kitchen and she was frying butter and just like, well, you see down here in the South, sometimes you make some chitlin grits and you don't let them into your club. And then it was discovered that she hosted a bunch of parties on a plantation and just was a like was history's greatest racist. And her excuse basically was like, I'm from Louisiana. What do you want me to call them? And then everyone was like, all right, Paula. <laughs> 
Out you go. That's sick. And now I guarantee she's walking around being like, I was a victim of cancel culture because those goddamn beep, 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 beep don't know oh, how to yeah. take a beep, beep, Fox George News Soros, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> George Soros. It always comes back to fucking George Soros. Uh, here's another idea. Harley has to have epic mealtime meal, right? Our Harley versus a five star chef, but the five star chef is hammered or on drugs, and then he advertised for the drugs. Oh my god, I want to watch that so bad. That would be such a fun cooking show. It's an amateur cook versus a professional cook. Mm-hmm. Professional cook is fucked up. Oh it's my god, I want to watch annihilated. Oh my god. Um, here is. Um, what I would want actually, that's not even fair because all five star chefs, you know, how much coke it would take a five star chef to look. This is the but this is my spin (laughs) is you have it's a wheel of product that they before they cook, so it's like okay, one one fentanyl pill, 10 10 milligram edibles. That's good, yeah, one line of coke, one shot of heroin, 10 shots of Jack Daniels. Uh, we. (laughs) We just put a monkey in the kitchen. You're totally sober. We let loose a monkey. Like you just try and cook while there's a monkey in the kitchen. What's the monkey going to do? I don't know, man. It's a monkey. What do you think? You think this is a TV show? Um, and then the next category is um, uh, all of your ingredients. You have to also use as utensils. So the, that versus just a regular chef. I fucking watched the shit out of that. that. That show. First of all, cancel this podcast. We're making that show. That show. Like, get, call. let's call. We need to get Joe Rogan's phone number. He'll back that. Hey, Joe, we're going to get Elon Musk to uh, versus Wolfgang Puck. And Wolfgang Puck is on DMT. <laughs> first of all, what is the first, when, when did we last talk to each other? I have to I have to know whenever I'm speaking to someone, I need to know when we last spoke before we can converse. OK, Joe. Here's all right. So here's another one. They, it's, they have to cater a wedding in epic mealtime style. And they can't take any, but the, this is the thing. Everyone at the wedding agrees that you can't, like, you can't cater to their dietary restrictions. So someone goes into a diabetic coma and Harley just uh, shouts Jack Daniels souse at them. There's no doctors allowed. If you go into a coma, if you can recover on your own, that's fine. Otherwise, Harley stands over them yelling the t-shirt slogans that he has. He's like, bacon and sauce. And then the person yeah, bacon. goes into the abyss. Yeah, uh, and muscles. Oh, there's also uh, there's a, another version of the wedding. Oh yeah, challenge. muscles glasses gets to fuck their wife or husband. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The way, okay, so this is what it is. So it's they they actually they're they're they, it's um it's called epic last meal, and they have to cater a funeral. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah, someone on death row. Yo, and if they finish God. it, okay. Harley has to trade places with them. No, no, it's even better than that. So it's called epic meal time. It's called epic last meal, and. Uh, Harley has to hunt the serial killer in, <laughs> that's good. on the yard. It's on the prison yard while that's happening. No, no, no. Pardon me. Muscles glasses has to fight the serial killer. And you don't know how long the fight's going to last and who's going to win. But in the allotted time of the fight, they have to cook his last meal. That's what it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's another one. This is just straight up. I think this one's actually a good idea. It's a dating show where they have to eat the thing that the Epic Mealtime people make and then go on a date. <laughs> I so like you that. cut okay. the fast food lasagna in half and you eat as much as you can of the fast food lasagna and then you go on a date. All right. I want you to know right now. There's a bunch good. of people with diarrhea on a date. That's good. Oh, I would love that too. What I also want, I want both people have to have eaten something from Epic Mealtime, but it's two different things and they are not allowed to talk about it and not allowed to use the bathroom for one hour. They, if they do not use the bathroom for <laughs> yeah, one hour good. while on the that's date. Good. Yeah. Oh. How about this, Dylan? Okay, we it's called I don't know what we call it, but we get a van and we drive around and then we pretend that we are like meeting strangers, but it's actually like professional paid actors. And then they get in the van and then they have sex with someone and then we sell uh, premium memberships to watch the full uncensored videos of them fucking in the back of the van. What so what you're that? saying is, okay, you want to <laughs> do the ultimate Montreal thing where it, which is just drive make around porn. in the bang bus. And the, someone has to finish an epic mealtime burger and then have sex with someone from the arcade fire. I'm okay with That's that. That's correct. That's correct. And they have to do that underneath the uh, the crumbling Champlain Bridge. Yes, and PK Subban films it. I like that. Oh yeah, that's it. to make this the mo- the most Montreal epic mealtime is PK Subban just fighting the front offense of the Montreal Canadiens over their 
open and violent racism. Listen, I don't think everything is racist. The trade of PK Subban by the Montreal Canadiens could not have been more racist if the coach didn't come out and be like, listen, I don't like him. I don't like him. <laughs> He's black. And I don't like that. Like that's that tra- like the man was literally building a new wing of the hospital. And they were like, send him to Nashville. And it's like, what are you getting? We're getting an injured goalie and the satisfaction of not having a black man in our locker room where the Montreal goddamn Canadians. Oh, what a f- I hate them so much. They got Shane Weber, who was older, same position. How do you do? Everyone thought it was. Um, he's fine. Yeah. Um, here's the other thing. Okay. So here's a little bit more about Epic Meal Empire, which was their show on the Weird Canadian Network called FYI. One season, 20 episodes. Basically, it's just epic meal time, but with a higher budget. And they would like, if they were going to make a dessert thing, they would go into like, if they were going to make like an epic Cinnabon, they would go to the Cinnabon factory and Harley would show up there and make a Cinnabon and annoy everyone that works there. For hey, a while. man, I'm overly confident for someone with this beard and body odor. <laughs> hey everyone this joke was cool five years ago but now it's 2015 and no one really remembers that uh when vince vaughn was a movie star for about two more years and then he's just gonna p- appear in bit parts in movies and we're gonna be like that's okay yeah uh the type of guy i am is no longer okay but uh i'm still making money off this yeah you remember jack black no one really does that's why i can get away doing an impression with him and call that a personality millennials were mar- <laughs> far more annoying than we really realized in the moment so here's my favorite thing is if you watch epic meal empire it's all the guys <laughs> from epic meal time and then this lady natalie forte who just clearly where they were like uh it can't just be a bunch of dudes we need a girl and she was uh she was on the baking channel or sorry no she was on the cooking network for a minute um watch her eyes she's like okay fuck i'm fucking i'm getting money for this and then of course now she goes into wellness she is a wellness brand i think i I wellness met this woman I mean, you could have. This was like, when did you move to England? Two thousand. I moved in July of 2012. Maybe. But yeah, she definitely is a person who is like, I I teach people how to bake cakes. Right now, you trying to make me, these people are making bacon ice cream and I have to eat it at the end. I don't want to do this. Like, I have self-respect. I I completely agree. I just want to say this about that woman, Natalie uh, Forte. Scratch the surface. She believes in QAnon. I'm just going to say that based <laughs> off of her website. Hey, wellness influencer. Oh, let me say this Play right now, up. Dylan. Dylan, what do you think if you see a website that's got a lot of cursive writing on it? I think fucking, you know what I think? And this is, this is bad, but I think um, other income. I think they, this is not their main source of income. I think Great point. I, I got to tell you, I, I also, I also agree with that. And it indicates you got too much time on your hands and that's enough time that you got lost in a Facebook group. And now you believe that Joe Biden is a lizard man when he's not, he's just dead. <laughs> he's just dead. Yeah. Why does Joe he Biden keep, keep falling down? He died two years ago and they're just keeping him going. Do you need, what the fuck do you want from me? weekend at bernie's jesus christ yeah jesus fucking christ we're trying to live in the movies so after this um we get some people leaving muscles glasses leaves apparently he was just a paid actor to begin with he claimed tyler, like he, tyler lemko he, leaves go for it he claims he was not a paid actor and was far more a part of it and they're like you're not though bro <laughs> yeah so yeah. that's that and uh tyler lemko leaves who right now is a comedian in Montreal. He has a podcast. He's doing the exact same thing as the people that you are listening to right now. Yeah. He's doing <laughs> like the exact the, same the thing. Same and because, thing. The, because the internet's also an unforgiving mis- mistress, he may have a few more listeners than us, but not that many. Because I got to tell you, there must be nothing more brutal than the internet fame fall. Because especially at this time, no one knew who Epic Meal Time was anyway. So you'd have to be like, do you remember when people liked bacon? No, oh, I'm 20. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All the people that liked us uh, don't have time for this anymore. Can you pay attention to us? Fuck no. no. Yeah. <laughs> Do you uh, you know how you know how people really like vaping now? Yeah, that used to be bacon. Oh, oh, fine. What isn't bacon just like a 
Isn't that hard on your heart? No, yeah, but it's funny. Yeah. I Why? don't know, man. Like I don't I just fucking give me some money, man. <laughs> Listen, before we figured out that you money, could use the internet it. to just market to people, like sometimes it was just a marketplace of ideas. And here's the thing that people don't tell you about ideas. A lot of them are bad. Hey. That is not true. This guy, especially being in Canada, can trade on the fact that he had something go viral in 2010 for the rest of his life, come into a meeting, talk about synergy, give the same ideas that are very obvious, but dress them up as something different and then leave. And so true. That's Nibisco very true. Or whatever is going to give him 20 grand. Like, And that's, also that's the dumb. thing is, is that he was internet famous at the rise of all of the other tech billionaires. So I know someone that almost got a job working for one of the big Silicon Valley companies. And actually got undercut by the, Harley came in and took the job from them because it was literally just like, it's in Canada. We need a face that's recognizable in Canada. And he was like, I'm the Epic Mealtime guy. And they were like, that's, we remember that we are. <laughs> and then he got the job and then the job stopped being a thing for a long, like so quickly. It was very funny. <laughs> yeah, of course. They're like, uh, give me that. Yeah. Great. Tyler Lemko. Uh, he's yeah. He, I mean, he's still got 33,000 followers on twitter that's the other thing about social media is it evolves and changes so much like i think twitter for most of my the 2010s twitter was the cool one at least to me so it was like oh i'll put energy into twitter but then now it's all video so yeah it's more like tiktok and instagram so like if you just poured all of your effort into twitter then trying to pivot to Instagram or TikToks differ because it's like obviously a completely different medium. Oh, what is interesting like, is oh you... fuck, I worked all day to build on to it's basically like I worked all ten years to build this house and now uh it's been washed away into very the much. Ocean. Although that said, Twitter it still sort of somewhat has some cachet of those thirty thousand. It's the the ones that's heartbreaking are the people that had a million followers on Vine and then just oh, yes. see the nail. Yeah, that's not yeah. or Periscope. Oh my God. Do you remember Periscope? Periscope, Periscope was my favorite. Someone that we know told, I remember someone sat me down in 2016 and was like, you got to get on Periscope. Not many people are using it. You can attract an audience. And I was like, or they're going to shut it down. <laughs> and then they did. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You pour all this energy into things that are new and either it becomes TikTok or Periscope. Yeah. So that is, that is literally yeah. the game where you're like, fuck, I got all the people who were like, they're at the start of something and then it turned into Periscope and then they were like, ah, fuck, I've already done Vine and Periscope. I'm not doing this TikTok thing. Oh, fuck, fuck off. Now everything's TikTok. Anyway, everything is TikTok. Harley Morenstein had a podcast called the Harley Morenstein Podcast in 2020 um, where basically he's just rebranded. And the thing is, he has yeah, rebranded ba- because the Epic Mealtime channel is still run by him and it's still all his shit. So. Yeah. He's basically what he's interesting. Just, yeah. He's he's also he's pivoted to vlogging. He's pivoted to sort of its food centric things. It's like menu runs. What it more has become is he sort of morphed it into being a food, a influencer that's food adjacent with a semi popular blog. And, you know, that's the way these things are going to go. I got to be totally honest with you guys. I've really enjoyed the Epic Mealtime episode. I have to take a shit right now, which I feel like is the best <laughs> way to end the Epic Mealtime episode. So Ooh. guess what, guys? We will see you next week where we will be discussing Charlie Sheen. We'll be discussing Charlie Sheen's meltdown. Oh, my God. He uses There's nothing about movies. This is not a story of his movies. This is this a is story a... of a man falling apart. Thank you guys so much for you, listening. It's really good. He goes on the Alex Jones radio show, and that's not even close to the weird part. <laughs> Please rate and subscribe and subscribe all rating. I've been Dylan Gott. That was John Hastings. Enjoy the rest of your day, night, dishes, evening.